I'm going to give examples of user interfaces that are data-driven in a way that is extremely common on the web today. Some of these are more successful than others, and we're going to talk about how the data gets presented to the user and ways that we can make it more effective or ways that we can learn from the things that are working well. Here's our first example. It's from the website Blue Apron. Blue Apron is a service that delivers three meals to your doorstep once a week. This web page here shows the days that you'll receive a delivery and what's contained in that. What I like about this page is that it's a classic example of the design strategy called overview plus detail. What we can see is that there are, on the left-hand side of the screen, a set of weeks or months shown. So in this case, you've got July up top, August on the lower part, and then on the right-hand side, we see the three meals that are shown. Good design like this seems almost effortless maybe even a little bit spartan. But you have to realize that trimming down to show just this information, I'm sure was an extremely difficult task. People always want to add in more, one more thing, we've got the pixels, why have there be white space? It's difficult to be this sparse. But when you have a design this clean, it works extremely well. The fact that it's sparse doesn't mean that there's no information there. So I wanted to point out three particular signals that this page is offering. The first one is that one piece of functionality available on this page is whether you will receive a meal in a given week or not. I like this design because it uses a redundant code. There are two separate channels that are used to convey the same piece of information. In the case of whether you'll receive a delivery, a green check means that you will receive a delivery. A red X means that you won't. You can toggle that from this page. The next thing that we see here is that you can select any particular week to be able to see what's being shown. So for example, August 6th, where there will be a delivery, that week is grayed here very subtly, just enough to cue that it corresponds to what's happening on the right-hand side here. And then third, on the right-hand side, what we see are these are the three meals. And so this is what's coming. Uh, you get a total cost. There's ability to change, and there's an ability to skip. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that some elements are here are much more salient than others. Uh, if your eyes are like mine, or maybe it's close to lunchtime or dinner time, the first thing that you look at are these meals right here. Full color, large, that's what draws your eye. Everything else on the rest of the pages is much more subdued. There are other things that are scaled back. So for example, in this case, the price is scaled back. Given that it's exactly the same every week, I think that this is an entirely reasonable choice. And in fact, I think they've done a nice balance of uh, disclosing the service you're getting while not drawing too much attention to it since it happens every single time and it's the same. Now another place where you see a differential choice, and we've talked about this a few times in the course, is that um, Something that you do commonly, that's a big button, in this case, change menu. Something that happens less frequently becomes less easy to click on. Here's an example of uh, an application that hasn't followed this pattern. And this is the, the Peer Studio peer review system from my research group. Uh, and one thing that you'll see is, like Blue Apron, there are two choices that are available at the bottom of the screen. We made an error in this particular button design in a couple of ways. And you can see the differences from Blue Apron. And we actually saw the change in user behavior because of it. The challenge is that uh, it's rare that a submission is blank. So this is an infrequent option. However, we made the button the same size. We made it red. And we put it right next to the button that you hit all the time. This has a couple of challenges. One is that you might go to click on this button, but put the cursor just a few pixels off and click on the other button instead. We know from Fitt's law that you want to leave a nice gap between buttons. Second, um, the fact that the button's the same size and prominent and all of that indicates that it's relatively frequent. And one thing that Blue Apron did here for the less common choice of skipping we should have done the same thing here for making the submission, uh, for when the submission is blank. That if you have the lighter weight uh, widget, just a link as opposed to a big button, that's a cue to people that it happens less frequently. 
extremely subtle makes a difference. We saw people were clicking on this accidentally too often, so it's in need of redesign. When I talked about the Blue Apron page, one of the things that I talked about is that there's a lot of things that they could have shown, but they had a lot of restraint in not showing it. This is a web page that hasn't done as good a job with that restraint. So one thing that we see here is um, on our page, there are lines with the last updated, the post date, and a permanent link. Probably none of these three is needed, at least a, in the particular form that's shown. So we get a lot of, you know, just straight off the command line details about the last updated. This could probably be a little bit more discreet. You know, the New York Times, for example, might have an article where it says updated 644, done, or March 19th or something like that. This could be lighter weight and probably down at the bottom. It's rare that people need to know this information, so it doesn't need to be smack dab in the, at the center of the screen. And similarly, the, the post date and the last updated, you know, that's a date distinction that we don't really need. Lastly, the, if you've got a permanent link, it probably belongs as the URL. Uh, if you have reason to have different URLs, uh, you can have them redirect to the permanent link, or maybe you can do what some websites do, which is you just have a link in the corner somewhere that you can grab. This will sometimes also give you a shorter URL. Uh, which can be easy to pass along in an email or a text message or something like that. Now, the the other challenge that this uh, uh, this university page runs into is that um, there's not a grid that's aligned. All of you have now got some practice designing with grids. So one thing you'll notice is that um, even if we just look at the white part of the page, you've got one grid that's implied at the beginning here and then a different grid line here for no good reason. Uh, and then here, you've got this center funnel of information at the bottom. It's very difficult to read, as you'll remember, multi-line text that's centered. A lot of this we probably don't need. You could redesign this much more cleanly to be maybe one or two lines uh, that are just lined up and chunked at the bottom. When you have information that's related, it should go together. And when you give it some gaps, that indicates that it's less related. Here's another example of an excellent use of the overview plus detail strategy applied in a very different setting. It's actually also food. I must have captured all these when I was hungry. This is the Eater website. And what it does is it shows you good places to eat around town. Naturally, for that kind of task, a map user interface is extremely valuable. And what they've done here is they've added a scroll panel along the left-hand side with a map as the background. So this map is providing us the overview of where everything is. And then in this case, the detail is inset on the left-hand side here. Also works extremely well. The other thing you'll see again is that there's a really strong grid inside this overview. And you know, with both the Blue Apron site and the Eater site, if you have two very clearly delineated areas, each can have their own rhythm with inside that area. So the map can have a slightly different design cadence than uh, um, the info boxes do. Uh, the same thing we saw over here with Blue Apron. And this site has also done a great job at being able to distill lots of information in a way that doesn't feel overburdened. Very, very difficult to do.